Welcome to ECO 320 Internet and Network Economics. Now, the three words in the title of our class are going to be a useful jumping off point for understanding what this class is. Now, at the end of the day, it's an econ class. So this is our stance as we're approaching these issues of the internet and networks more broadly, we're thinking like economists. We're asking what does it make sense for someone to do for some particular node in a network, uh, given some event, what makes sense for them to do? Um, we're going to think about how different people in networks will have different values and how that will affect how we think about these things. Transaction costs are definitely going to be there. But overall, our big question is how do people navigate a world of scarcity? Right. So whether that's a question of what does it make sense to do or what should we expect someone to do? we are coming at these questions from that stance. Now, the big emphasis is going to be on what we might call network science. Mathematicians call this graph theory. This is a whole body of knowledge related to analyzing systems like this, where we have these different components that are linked to each other uh, in different ways. Um, let me grab nice useful textbook example to move some furniture to get it uh, so this is a little bit of a messy network that i drew more or less at random but a useful thing for this for for getting our understanding going is the question that created the system of network science at all. So the uh, bridges of, I think that's Königsberg is how that'd be pronounced. So this is an old uh, puzzle, or it was an old puzzle until the creation of what we now call graph theory. So this is a relatively simple problem. The question is, can you cross each of the bridges in this town exactly once and end up where you started? So can you kind of go around and end up somewhere? Uh, so Leonard Euler, a famous mathematician, solved this problem and in the course of doing that created graph theory, uh, which is an abstract system but it's going to help us a lot. And so that's what we're going to be really focusing on in this class is those abstract tools that are going to give you access to some timeless truths. So here's a nice illustration of the map with the bridges converted into a problem of this more abstract network, right? So what really matters in this question about can you cross each bridge exactly once is really the question of going from here to here, right? You cross the bridge. It doesn't matter if you can zigzag. It doesn't matter how wide the river is. What matters is you got two points and you got a connection between them. And then you can think about what happens if you, you know, check off each line as you go and figure out where can you go, right? It's, an abstraction and this abstraction gives us a mental tool that we can use to think more clearly about the problem and by thinking more clearly about the problem instead of having to try just every single possibility you know in an example like that particular puzzle you can say by understanding the system you can say things about the system you can make systemic predictions and you can understand and maybe even solve systemic problems. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty exciting thing, uh, this general system of knowledge for understanding how networks work. Um, this is not the easiest thing in the world, but by getting even just a little bit into this, we're going to be 
basically unlocking some really valuable mental tools that make it easier to understand how the network is doing what it is, why Amazon Web Services is so important, why Twitter worked as a business model, all these different things um, we can understand by better understanding the underlying logic of networks more generally. So, over the next couple of weeks, our goal is to kind of bounce around between these three areas, thinking about some traditional economic questions, things like spillovers, how those relate to networks, thinking about you know, how the internet is affecting transaction costs and therefore affects the pattern of trade that we see in an economy. Uh, and we're going to look at more abstract things like how do we measure the average degree of a network like this? How do we find paths between different nodes? These sort of harder, more mathematical things. Uh, but the goal of understanding those abstractions is that they are going to give us uh, an incredibly widely applicable set of mental tools that connects things as diverse as economies and food chains and ecosystems and evolution and uh, pandemics and everything else. Uh, there's a lot of really exciting things that we can see when we start to see the world as systems of networks. But in order to do that, we're going to have to load some some tools. We're going to have to we're going to have to build up some mental tools and learn to think in a way that isn't obvious and natural because, well, trying to see something that isn't immediately there for the eye to see. Uh, we're looking at complicated things and we're gaining access to knowledge and information that other people don't have. Uh, so you're going to hopefully sort of uh, build up a bit of a superpower here uh, over the course of this class. We're not going to, you know, get bogged down in superficial details like what company's big right now. The goal, like I've said, is timeless truths. So that's our class. Uh, I will see you out in the class in the next couple weeks. If you've got questions, I highly encourage you to reach out, uh, ask questions on the class discord or the class blog or by email, and I'll see you in the future.